If a doctor were to examine a body, he would take note of certain vital statistics and he would measure those against the standard. Based on his findings, he would determine whether or not that body were well or not well, or alive or not alive. In the case of the body of Christ, which is the church, Colossians 1.18, a similar study can be conducted. So where then will we find our standard for measurement? Well, we'll find that in the Word of God, primarily because it is authoritative, and we can appeal to no higher standard than the Word of God. For all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. Second, because the word of God is permanent. It will never need adjustments or additions. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away, Matthew 24, 35. And third, because the word of God is thorough and sufficient. It's a complete and perfect standard for the measurement of a man for all times. Well, the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, to the joints and marrow, and is a discerner the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Hebrews 4, 12 and 13. Now that we have the source from which we will find our measurement, our standard, let's look at the details of our standard. First, we'll look at the life of Jesus Christ. Matthew 4, 23 records this standard for us. It begins with the words, and Jesus went about all Galilee. Jesus did not come to the earth to be idle or to sit still and merely exist here, but on the contrary, the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost, Luke 19, 10. Further, Jesus went preaching the gospel as it continues in Matthew 4. And this action was not presumptuous, nor was it arbitrary, but this action was the very will of the Father. For I have not spoken of myself, but my Father which commanded me. He gave me what I should speak and what I should say. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father has sent me, so I speak. John 12, 49 and 50. Not only did Jesus go, not only did Jesus preach, but he offered relief. Continuing in Matthew 4, Jesus went about healing all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases among the people. The ending of 4.23. Jesus healed their sicknesses. He liberated those that were possessed. He healed them. His heart filled with compassion caused him to do more than just preach to the people, but he offered them relief. This standard that was set by Christ continued with the disciples. After they were handpicked by our Lord, they got busy following in his very footsteps, continuing, perpetuating, adhering to the standard that he had set forth. Consider Matthew 10, 7 and 8. And as ye go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. You see what he told them to do? To go, to preach, and to offer relief to the people. This pattern continued straight through to the establishment of the church. Acts 1.12, the apostles would go to Jerusalem. Acts 2.14, Peter would preach the first gospel sermon. 
In Acts 2.45, the church offered benevolent relief to all the saints for all that had need. You see the pattern continuing, going, preaching, and offering relief. In fact, whenever you search the scriptures and you find this pattern being kept, you will see the church well, alive, and thriving. And so the pattern has been set. So what then is the status of the church today? We see in the first century that the church was alive and well when the pattern was kept, but what about today? How can we see the status of the church today? Do we go according to the standard? Every year, from coast to coast and even beyond, faithful men are taught and trained to go from homes and congregations to schools of preaching and universities. Men are trained to go. But not only are they taught to go, they're taught to preach. From these launching pads of schools and homes and faithful congregations, they're taught to preach according to the standard. And that can be seen no more clearly than here at the Memphis School of Preaching. For our motto is preach the word, taken from 2 Timothy 4.2. From lectureships and gospel meetings, pulpits around the world, men are taught to go and to preach. Not only do we go, not only do we preach, but we offer relief. No, we don't do it miraculously, as did Jesus and the apostles, but we do it through efforts of benevolence. Every food basket, every clothing drive, every phone call of encouragement, every card of sympathy that we send, we serve to offer relief to those that are in need. And so as we consider the body today, as we examine the body of Christ right now in 2013, what then is the status of the body? When we look back to the standard, we read, Go ye into all the world, Mark 16, 15. And yes, we go. When we look back to the standard, we read the words, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, 2 Timothy 4, 2. And yes, we preach. When we look back to the sacred standard, we read the words, as we therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially to those of the household of faith, Galatians 6.10. And yes, we offer relief. So what then is the result of the church today? What is the status of the body of Christ today as we examine it under the light of the scriptures? According to the sacred standard, the church has a clean bill of health. Oh yes, the church is doing well and is thriving. Brothers and sisters, friends, be encouraged. No, be emboldened with the words that the church of Christ is well and alive for many reasons, but specifically because of its daily discipleship.